All right, so switch on your video. Let's start today's class. Is my screen visible to you? Um, yes, ma'am. All right, uh, yes. Hmm. Your video is not visible to me. Like, I can't see you. Hello, am I audible? <clears throat> Hello, Rida, am I audible to you? Hello, am I audible? Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Am I audible to you? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. The meeting just went on its own because of the laptop some error. Yeah, I think so too. Because you know you like you switched on your video, but your video was not on here. Try it again. Yes, ma'am. Now it's fine. All right. So quickly, just tell me what were we doing in the previous class? Where did we left off? Now we did uh, Kingdom Monera, and I think we started with Kingdom Protista. Mom, can you teach Kingdom Monera once again? The whole entire kingdom? Yeah, the Monera part. Okay, okay, great. First, just tell me, like, where did we left off? You know, because uh, I have to give the portion for your test. Okay, so one second. Yeah, just look it into your notes.
Yes, Mom, we based in the Protista part. The introduction of Protista, right? Yeah, we did Monera. We have to start Protista. We have to start Protista. Yeah. yeah. It's what I need to do. Okay. All right. So let us give a quick revision of Kingdom Monera. <clears throat> Now, Kingdom Monera, it consists of all the bacteria and talking about here, the cell wall is present. The cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan and the Monera, they are unicellular. They can be colonial or they can be filament. Now, nucleolar, chromatin and histone proteins are absent in them and DNA is scattered in the cell. <clears throat> now, uh, the Monerans, the members of the kingdom Monera, they contain a cell wall that is made up of peptidoglycan, but this cell wall is absent in the case of archaebacteria and the mycoplasma. Now, talking about the nutrition, so they can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Autotrophic is when they can make their own food. Now, they can be photosynthetic autotrophic using light as a source, or they can be Chemosynthetic autotrophic, meaning using the certain inorganic chemicals as the source. Talking about the phototrophic, uh, sorry, heterotrophism, they can be saprophytic, symbiotic, or parasitic in nature. Now, depending on the shape, they can be focus, that is spherical shape, bacillus, that is rod shape, and vibrium, comma shaped, and spirillum, that is spiral shape. Now, they also have ribosomes present and their ribosomes are 70F type. So, Is it fine now? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> the connection is unstable in my side also. I don't know why. Now. Talking about the different types of Monera, we have Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, Mycoplasma. Talking about the Archaebacteria, these are the ones that can survive in harsh weather conditions and harsh conditions. And there, um, you can say <clears throat> the cell wall is absent in them. Now, for all those Archaebacteria that live in the high salt concentration, they are halophiles. The ones that live in the hot springs, they are known as thermoacidophiles. And the ones that live in the marshy areas, these are the methanogens. Now, the methanogens, they are also produced in the digestive system of the cattle, such as the cows and buffaloes. Now, after that comes the eubacteria. Now, eubacteria, they have a rigid cell wall present. They have flagella present, which uh, like, it enables them to move around. And apart from that, their mode of nutrition is photosynthetic autotrophic type because they have chlorophyll A present in them. One example of U bacteria is the cyanobacteria, also known as the blue-green algae. Now, <clears throat> talking about the cyanobacteria, so this is this can be present in three different forms, such as unicellular forms, colonial forms, and filamentous forms. Now, the unicellular forms are those that have just one cell. Colonial is when many cells come together, they form a colony, and then filamentous form is like the longer form. According to the habitat, they can be found in the freshwater area, such as the pond, the lakes. They can be found in the marine area, such as the seas and ocean and they are also found on terrestrial habitats such as the land. Now no matter where they are found, their colony is surrounded by a gelatinous sheath, meaning a gelatinous layer <clears throat> that is made up of mucilage. Now the two most important examples of the cyanobacteria, they are Nostoc and Anabina and what is so special about them? is that they are able to fix <coughs> nitrogen <Adhesion> fixation. <coughs> Just one second here. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> 
Yes, so they can do nitrogen fixation. Now, why can they do nitrogen fixation? Is because of the presence of specialized cells in their body, that is the heterocyst. Now, heterocyst contains an enzyme that is known as nitrogenase, and that because of that enzyme only, nitrogen fixation can take place. Now, apart from the heterocyst, now heterocyst is the special cell. Talking about the other cells that are there in the body. Those are known as the vegetative cells. And again, they will also be surrounded by the gelatinous or mucilage covering. This, this particular diagram is of the filamentous blue-green algae that is nostoc. Now, uh, up till now, we have discussed about the autotrophic mode of nutrition and archaebacteria and eubacteria. Now, moving on to the chemosynthetic autotrophic mode of nutrition. <coughs> <coughs> Now, chemosynthetic here, we know that with the help of certain inorganic substances as a source, the food is made. Um, and, yes? Your voice had become slow. It came now. Is it fine now? Yes. Yeah. So, as far as the chemosynthetic autotrophic nutrition goes here, the certain inorganic substances is getting oxidized and then that energy is being released for the formation of ATP. Here, nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, these are the inorganic substances that can be used as the source. Now, apart from uh, doing the, you can say, autotrophic mode of nutrition, by this method, they can also recycle like nitrogen, phosphorus, ammonia and sulfur. Like these uh, molecules can be recycled in the environment because of the process, because they are using it to convert it into different forms. Now talking about <clears throat> heterotrophic bacteria. Now heterotrophic bacteria are the ones that cannot make their own food. And majority of them are decomposers, meaning they feed on the dead and decaying stuff. They, like de they decompose the organic material to release certain inorganic substances. Now, they are important for humans' use, such as they help in making curd from milk. The example is lactobacillus, that is lactic acid bacteria. Apart from that, they help in the production of antibiotics, such as streptomyces. They help in the nitrogen fixation in legume roots, like the, in the roots of the leguminous plants, such as pulses. Uh, the example is the bacterium, that is rhizobium. Now, these are for as far as they are positively like of use for human beings. Then talking about how they impact human beings and any other animals is by causing several diseases. And the diseases that are caused by them are known as bacterial diseases. Now, tetanus, pneumonia, plague, tuberculosis, leprosy, cholera, diphtheria, typhoid and citrus cancer. These are the diseases that are caused in humans by bacteria. Apart from that, the bacteria also cause diseases in animals, such as anthrax is a cattle disease. Then also there is botulism. Now talking about the reproduction in bacteria, the main mode of reproduction is fission, which is a type of asexual reproduction. They are so primitive, so not a lot of, you can say, sexual reproduction can happen in them because they are very primitive in nature. So, talking about binary fission, that takes place in them, wherein first the genetic material will divide and then the cell will divide. <clears throat> now, after that, I don't know what is happening. The screen is not loading. Is it loaded to on your side? Is the screen loaded? Yes, ma'am. Now, during unfavorable conditions, now that fission is something that they do in the favorable conditions. Now, during unfavorable conditions, they reproduce by spore formation. Now, one method of sexual reproduction is present in them and that is known as transduction, which is a DNA transfer technique in which primitive DNA from one bacteria is transferred to another with the help of the, the virus that infects bacteria that is bacteriophage. 
Any doubts up until now? No. Talking about mycoplasma. Now the mycoplasma, they are very weird creatures. They do not have cell wall. And they are the smallest living organism. Their size is 0.3 micrometer. They can even survive without oxygen. So they are anaerobic in nature. They cause multiple diseases. And the example of mycoplasma is mycoplasma galli septicum. Clear? Yes, With this, we have revised the kingdom Monera. Now tell me, like you have written nothing about kingdom Protista? No, I have not written it here. I think, ma'am, maybe you taught and then you remember you uh, did not like, make me write it. The class was over. Yeah, the class was over. And at the end, you told like to write it. That's yeah, why. so up till where have you written? I don't Because as far as I remember, I think I have completed Kingdom Protesta. Even I think so, but I have not written Kingdom Protesta completely. I have not done Kingdom Protesta. At all? No. Ma'am, because uh, I remember you teaching, but not uh, like... Yeah, you even have done... I remember yeah. teaching because, yeah. you know, like I remember I have completed the whole entire thing. And today, uh, yeah. I... Uh, I did write about uh, Kingdom Protesta only till Dino... Yeah. Okay, okay. Only till here. Now you have to note down from here, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think we have completed the whole entire kingdom protesta, right? Yes, ma'am. And today I have to start kingdom fungi with you, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Screen is not loading. Just give me one second. I'll load it once again. Okay, you have to load down from here, right? From Dino Paddy. Um, then the the red Dino Padilates divide very rapidly and make the sea appear red. Okay, you can note down till here. Yes, you can switch off your video. No. Switch off your video. Right, comfortably. It's fine. When I Sorry, ma'am. Your voice is again. You know. Yeah, I'm saying switch off your video for like the time period you're writing it down, and then you can yes. switch on when I'm teaching. Yes.
Ma'am, you can scroll down.
going on? Done? Yes, ma'am.
Can you uh, show the top line? The top is cute.
Yes, one second, please. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now let's start with another kingdom. Now, kingdom protesta is that, right? Now, see. Uh, you have an upcoming test, okay? And in that test, the portion that I am giving is the living world and the biological classification up till kingdom protesta, meaning up yes, till here, okay? This will be the portion. Now, today we'll be starting. I'll just give you a sort of, you can say, intro to kingdom planty because, you know, in our class 11 syllabus, there is a different chapter for plant kingdom and there is a different chapter for animal kingdom. So in this chapter also, there is like some introduction to the topic. So I talked about plant kingdom now or kingdom planting. Here in this kingdom, there is the eukaryotic organisms. All of them are chlorophyll bearing organisms. But now if I say chlorophyll bearing, meaning all of them are autotrophic in nature, right? They can make their own food. But even amongst all the plants, there are some plants that are heterotrophic in nature, such as the insectivorous plants and the parasitic plant. So the example for insectivorous plants, meaning they feed on insects, such as the bladder wart and the venous flytrap. These are the ones that are the insectivorous plants. They do not make their own food. And then there is cascuta. Now, cascuta is a plant that is Actually, you can say uh, parasitic on other plants. What they do, these yellow ones that you're seeing, they will be present on the body of another plant and derive their nutrition from there. So apart from autotrophic plants, we have insectivorous and parasitic plants. Now in the kingdom planty, there are these divisions such as division um, algae. Yes. One, the insectivorous and the parasites are different from the autotrophs, right? Hmm, 100%. See, yes, the autotrophic ones, they do not make their own, uh, they make their own food, right? They do photosynthesis. Yes, but insectivorous plants, they eat insects. They do not yes, make their own food. Talking about parasites, they also do not make their own food. Rather, they, uh, you can say, depend on another plant for what? For their nutrition. Like they live on the body of another plant and derive nutrition from the other plant's body. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. So now, do you remember that there was kingdom phylum class, right? So the phylum, which is division for plants. So these are the divisions that are found in the kingdom planty, such as king, uh, the division algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. So all of these we will be seeing in the kingdom planty when we'll talk about them in the chapter. Room. Okay. Up until now, this is just to remember that the kingdom algae is the most primitive one and the king, the, sorry, I'm saying kingdom. The division algae is the most primitive one and the division angiosperm is the advanced one. Clear? Yes. Hmm. Now, we'll start with kingdom fungi. But before that, let me give you the introduction to kingdom animalia because that is also very teeny tiny. And this kingdom fungi is actually really long and it has a lot of technicalities to understand. There's a lot of groups in it. So first, let's talk about the kingdom animalia. Where have I written it? Yes. Hmm. So talking about the kingdom animalia, so all the organisms here, they are heterotrophic. They cannot make their own food. They are dependent directly on the plants or indirectly. They are eukaryotic. All of them are eukaryotic and all of them are multicellular. None of them is unicellular in kingdom animalia. The cell wall is absent. The reserve food material for animals is glycogen. 
Do you know what is the reserve food material of plants? Starch. Any, yes, starch. Now, the mode of nutrition in the case of animals is holozoic. Holozoic is that they take in the food and then they digest the food. That is holozoic mode of nutrition. All of the members of the kingdom animalia, they are motile, they can move and sexual reproduction is present. Mom, yeah? in, in this, uh, uh, so we'll have like subdivisions. Holozoic, no. Okay. Holozoic itself is a type of heterotrophic mode of nutrition wherein the food is ingested as a whole and then it is chewed and digested in the body. That is holozoic mode of nutrition. So these are all the points that are there in the kingdom animalia. Now, furthermore, kingdom animalia has been classified into many phylums. Phylum porifera, cylindrata. Again, we'll talk about each of those when we talk about the chapter. Okay. So first you note this down, this thing. And then you note the kingdom plantae. You can write the names of the insectivorous and parasitic plants. Like give like write insectivorous and give the exam, right? Yeah.
And these are like the other uh, subdivisions of And what is a uh, petri petridophyte again? It's pteridophyte. It is uh, like one uh, one of the divisions of kingdom plantae. It is known as pteridophyte. The P is silent. Okay. Mom, like the sixth one. See, it's written here only, pteridophyte. I like I have written it here because like when while I was teaching this topic to some other batch, the student was oh, asking yeah. me the spelling. So I was like I wrote it in bigger letters here. That is why it's the same thing. Okay, now we'll start with the kingdom fungi. Now see, have you heard about fungus before? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. So this. Fungus is actually from a whole entire kingdom. It has been given a different kingdom of its own that is known as the kingdom fungi. Now, all the members of the kingdom fungi, they are heterotrophic organisms, all of them. None of them can make their own food. Now, let us see some of the examples. Now, see, everyone must have seen this once in their lifetime. The bread, when it goes bad, it forms certain black spots around it. That is the mold. And this mold is caused by the fungus only. So fungi is present on the moist bread. You might have noticed like when the bread is left out for too long and not kept in the refrigerator, it goes bad. Isn't it? Certain blue spots but come sometimes up. Sometimes even if you are keeping it in the refrigerator for like too long, it spoils. Yes, yes. It gets spoiled. Exactly. Now the second is mushrooms. Like many of us eat mushrooms, right? And those mushrooms are nothing but fungi only. These are the edible fungi that we eat. Now, you might have seen this also. It is there in the WhatsApp emoji also. And this is the most, like in the cartoons also, they show mushroom like this. Now, all the mushrooms that are beautiful, that are red in color, they are poisonous. Poisonous. Yes. So, these are the poisonous, the most poisonous mushrooms. And then... There are certain mushrooms that cause diseases in plants. If you see here in the picture of a leaf, you see white spots all around. These white spots. Yes, hmm. yes, so this white spots, they are caused because of the mush, uh, the mush, the fungi. And this is uh, on the mustard leaves. Okay, it is because of a parasitic fungus. So with this, we are seeing that fungus is, they, like the fungi is present everywhere. Now, one more thing to remember that all the members of the kingdom fungi, they are also multicellular, but there is one exception that is yeast. Have you heard about yeast before? Yes, ma'am. What, like, what are they used for? Making bread. Making bread for fermentation, right? So yeah. that yeast, the, the scientific name of yeast is Saccharomyces. 
This Saccharomyces is the only fungus that is unicellular. Rest all the fung fungus are filamentous, they are filament like and they are multicellular in nature. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, talking about the habitat. Now, the fungus, they are cosmopolitans. Cosmopolitans means they occur everywhere. They are present in the air, in the water, soil, and even on the body of animals and plants. They Now, the best thing is that they prefer warm and humid places, meaning the fungus would grow well when there is a warm climate and a humid climate. This is the reason why we put our food in the refrigerator because in the refrigerator there is cold temperature and uh, humidity is also not there in the fridge, right? It's very dry and cold. So it means that the fungus will not grow there. Many a times the fungus can even grow when like the thing is kept in the refrigerator is because of contamination. Because maybe while keeping it in the fridge, some contamination so was already. Yeah. Like yeah. water or something. Exactly. Now, talking about the body of the fungi, so it is long, it is slender, means thin, and it is thread-like, okay? And the body of the fungus is called as the hyphae, meaning the basic structure, just like how cell is the basic structure in the animal's body, right? Here, the basic structure is the hyphae, and then men, many hyphae come together, they form a mycelium. Ma'am, uh, do um, those bulb-like structures on top of the hyphae also is like the like part of the hyphae? Which one? Like, like there are like, th like the round things on the sticks. That is the hyphae. Where? In the picture? No, no, no. no, no. I'm just asking. Like, no, on no, the no, bread. No. no, no, no. That is not the hyphae. See, the hyphae would be like a thread like structure filamentous structure yeah okay. does the and filament then, structure like have a bob like thing no okay i i am not understanding where what are you saying by the bob like thing like where have you seen it if you can tell like rhizopus uh, or something rhizopus oh. yeah so hmm. so see rhizopus yeah. wherever it is present rhizopus is the bread mold it it is present in the form of a network Okay, and that is mycelium, not the hyphae. Okay, it's like multiple my uh, hyphae are coming together and forming a net-like structure that is mycelium. Now, okay, maybe okay. it, yeah, maybe it can have a bob-like structure. Maybe not. That depends on the body of the fungus. But in general, it does. Now, talking about these hyphae, these hyphae are of many types. See, some hyphae are continuous tube with multinucleated cytoplasm. See. Uh, do you remember that I have said, now see, uh, hyphae is like a tubular structure like this, okay? And in that, there is multinucleate condition, meaning multiple nuclei are present. Now, when I was teaching you about the cell division in general, what happens? The nucleus divides and then the cell divides, isn't it? Yes. Normally. Now, here what happens? The cell will not divide and this whole entire thing will have multiple nuclei present in it. This is the case of hyphae and this type of hyphae is known as cenocytic hyphae wherein a multinucleate condition is there and there is no cross wall formation. Clear? Yeah. Got it? Yes, ma'am. So this type of hyphae is cenocytic hyphae. No cross wall is present. Now the cell wall of fungi, it is made up of chitin and polysaccharide. This chitinous cell wall is a very, you can say, unique thing about them is because it is a very hard substance. So chitin is the cell wall of fungi. Now talking about the mode of nutrition, as I told you, they are not at all heterotroph uh, at autotrophic. The only mode of nutrition in them is heterotrophic. So they can be saprophytic, they can be parasitic, and they can be symbiotic. Now, saprophytic means that they feed on the dead and decaying. Parasitic means that they can be present on no, the body of the host. host. Yeah, on the body of the host. So, they are ectoparasite. In the body of the host, so they are endoparasite. 
ना सेम बायोटिकोटिक प्लांट ना सेम बायोटिक रिलेशनशिप इज वेन द लाइक इन like when the fungus is present with an algae then that is a symbiotic association or if it is present with another organism such as the roots of higher plants so lichen and mycorrhiza these are the two symbiotic association symbiotic means But symbiotic that, in the sense both of them will get advantage of each other like exactly. they live in harmony exactly they live in harmony both of them will be getting advantage from each other for example if we are talking about lichen so lichen is a symbiotic association with a fungus plus the algae wherein the algae being photosynthetic photosynthetic provides food to the fungus and fungus provides shelter to the algae because algae are microscopic so that is how they benefit each other and they cannot live without each other yeah now talking about mycorrhiza here the fungus is in a symbiotic association with roots of leguminous or roots of higher plants now again these plants uh, uh, like them being autotrophic they provide nutrition to the fungus and fungus since they are present in the root area they help the plant to absorb more and more nutrients from the soil again helping each other so this type of relationship is the symbiotic relationship okay i've written here only why did i write another time over there symbiotic association of Ma'am, fungus so and... um symbiotic has two that is the fungi and the algae and then the fungi along with the roots of higher plants hmm. higher plants in the sense uh angiosperms gymnosperms okay the most advanced plants okay and their association like fungus plus algae when they are present together it is known as lichen and fungus plus roots of higher plants when they are present together it is known as mycorrhiza yes ma'am can you come a little bit closer the volume just stop okay okay wait yeah. yeah okay now the reproduction in fungi see in the fungus the reproduction can be vegetative it can be asexual and it can be sexual now do you know the meaning of vegetative propagation yeah when you cross one plant stem with another plant stem to create a new uh, not actually crossing thing. but it is when the part of the plant body or part of the yeah. body is used for reproduction that is vegetative propagation so under the vegetative propagation the fungus can reproduce by fragmentation budding and fission fragmentation is when the uh, fungus body if it gets cut into two parts so each of those parts can grow or develop into a new fungus that is well, regeneration sort of like regeneration but see there is a difference between regeneration and fragmentation both of them are the same thing actually if you look at it right like parts of their body will grow into new bodies that is the mm-hmm. same thing between them but regeneration happens in the case of accident accidentally if the planaria gets so- cut Right, okay, okay. then it develops. But fragmentation yeah, it is on a, purpose for reproduction. Fragmentation, it's a process in itself. Like it will get into certain fragments, and then each of those fragments will grow into new fungus. Here, it's so, not happening. So here, it does it on purpose. Oh, okay. Yeah, here it is in pur- like on purpose only. But in the case of regeneration, it is accidentally. accidentally okay. if the planaria gets cut accidentally if the tail of the lizard gets cut then it grows a new one got it yes ma'am now then there is budding now budding is an outgrowth that grows on the body right and each of those bud they detach and grow into the new organism lastly fission we have already discussed fission wherein first the nucleus like the genetic material will divide and then the cell will divide clear so these are the three ways by which vegetative propagation takes place in the case of fungus okay now, now can you, you just mm-hmm. explain the budding like it yeah. takes uh, for example like it breaks from the mother cell hmm for example this is the mother cell right now on the mother cell's body there will be an exogenous growth this is known as budding exogenous means on the body outside like it comes from outside 
it grows on the outside it's not a part of the mother cell uh no it's not a part of the mother cell rather it grows on the mother cell and uh, when this um, but does it like come from the outside like uh see uh i don't know if it comes from the outside but it is exogenous in nature and being exogenous means that it develops on the outside for example if this is the surface the bud is developing on here now i don't know where it is coming from but it develops on the body it doesn't okay. develop inside that is the thing. okay and these bud when they get detached from the parent's body they develop into the new organ clear the new buds yeah the new fungus okay. the new cell for the fungus now then there is a uh, like the fission wherein the organism's first genetic material will divide and then the cell will divide clear yes now you know down till here any doubts up until now no Mom, it is saccharomyces, right? Hmm. Saccharomyces. Saccharon N is there only M? No, M M M M M Y.
Um, have you written draft of five way? Yes, a draft of hyphy means a bundle, a bunch.
Ben? Yes, ma'am. Ok. Ma'am, uh, can you tell what is exogenous and endogenous? Exogenous is the um, outside part and the endog endogenous mm -hmm. is the inside part, right? See, if, if the bud grows on the parent body, then that is exogenous bud. If the bud grows inside the parent body, then that is endogenous bud. Okay, exogenous is bud. Grown outside on the part of on the, the body on the parent body. Mom, uh, do I have to write outside? No, don't write outside. Outside can mean here, there, anywhere. Right okay. on. Bud grown on the parent body, and this one is bud grown in the parent body. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You've done up till here? Uh, one second.
ओके ओके Standard. All right, so we'll keep it till here only for today. Now, in the yes. next class, we'll continue with the A section.